Some of the food we preserve, we grow ourselves, but there is also a lot that we buy in bulk. here from Bush Edge Homesteading Australia and today I have been down to the big watermelon in Warren Turner and picked up a whole bunch of produce. Some of this is for fresh eating but it's the holidays at the moment which means I've got a bit of an opportunity to do some preserving as well and I saw that they had some amazing wholesale deals on things like the bananas and also on the onions so I wanted to go down and pick those up. And at the same time, I've managed to pick up a lot of other fresh food for eating. And I thought I would share what I've got here today, but also just have a little bit of a chat about how I get my hands on some of the produce that we use for preserving. Now, when it comes to preserving, the reason I really got into a lot of the preserving, not only because I like good food, is because we had a lot of produce coming off of our plants in the garden and Anyone that gardens knows that you tend to get your food in gluts when you garden. And uh, you can see I've got some peaches here, although it's not, not as much of a glut as I normally get because the birds and the bats and the possums, I think that's everything. Oh, and there were some storms and terrible weather, all kind of affected our crop this year, but I've still got some lovely peaches here. And normally I get lots of plums as well. And again, I got attacked by all of those things on our plum tree. So this is pretty much all the plums that I'm going to get this year as well. Um, but essentially the reason I like to preserve is because you get those gluts and I like to be able to preserve our own homegrown food so that we've got it when it's out of season. But um, I can't grow everything here. So you probably see over here today, I've got this big order. Well, not order. It's a big purchase of food that we did this morning down at the big watermelon where I bought this huge box of bananas. In fact, not even just one. I've got two big boxes of bananas here. And they are 15 kilo boxes of bananas that I got for $15 each. So that is an incredible deal. I've got about 30 kilos of bananas here for about 30 bucks. And I'm going to be able to turn these into a heap of banana chips. Um, I'm also going to do some fruit roll-ups. I've got some mango that I'd previously put in the freezer already prepared that I'm going to blend up with some of this as well to make some mango and banana fruit roll-ups and from experience um, when you do even just one of these boxes it keeps us going for a good half the year so I'm kind of hoping that with the two boxes this will keep us going for the year in kind of banana chips and also um, some of those banana -y fruit roll-ups. Oh, and the other thing that I'll do as well, if I've got some extra, is I'll just chunk some up, put it in Ziploc bags, and put it in the freezer, because that is amazing when you're doing things like smoothies. And I've also bought myself a new toy recently for Christmas, one of those Ninja ice cream makers. Oh my God, that thing is just incredible. And the banana in that is really good. So I'm kind of hoping if I put some banana in the freezer I can take that out when I blend it up to make ice cream mix I can then use that to make homemade ice cream too so now that I'm saying all that I probably should have bought three boxes of bananas but anyway two is going to be enough for me to get through in the next couple of days the other bulk thing that I bought was this one here which is a 10 kilo of onions and I want to dehydrate that and turn that into onion powder because I'm sure that any of you that use a lot of onion powder in your cooking, you know, if you like us, like doing smoking and stuff like that, you use a lot of onion powder and onion powder is ridiculously expensive when you buy it from the supermarket and you get it in those kind of little itty bitty spice kind of shakers and it just doesn't go far at all. And I'll be able to do a huge amount with this beautiful big bag of onions. Now, those two things I got from the wholesale area at the big watermelon and it is kind of worth noting um, and this might be the case with various fruit and veggie shops around the place that they might have different areas to sell wholesale and retail at the big watermelon you kind of go into the retail area you walk through and it kind of feels a bit weird because you go into an area out the back um, and it it's kind of looks like it's where the staff work and process a lot of fruit and veg and stuff like that. But it's also where they sell all the big boxes for wholesale. 
And even though I don't have like a business or an ABN or anything like that, I can register just as a member of the public if I buy bulk quantities from there. Um, and even just, you know, the couple of boxes that I've got here and the onions, you know, as a member of the public, that was enough for me to be able to go and buy just those today, which was pretty cool. Now, the rest of the uh, fruit and veg are just from the normal retail area that they have there. And this is all just for general kind of eating. You know, there's some carrots and some tomatoes, zucchini, got some broccoli, a couple of different types of apples, some of the, the Fujis and also some of the Granny Smith because our apples, I think we're actually going to get some off of our trees this year, which will be great. But right at the moment, we don't have any for fresh eating and... Uh, yeah, these will keep the kiddos happy. Just a few things like some cherry tomatoes and oh my goodness, the kids love these little mini cucumbers. I think I'm actually gonna get some cucumbers out in the garden this year. So essentially they could just pick some of their Lebanese ones out in the garden. If they pick them small enough, it's the same thing really, isn't it? Um, big bag of potatoes. What else have I got? Oh, the cabbage. So you can see I've got a big wombok here and underneath here we've also got one of the daikon radishes and putting those two things together you can probably guess what i'm about to make another batch of yes kimchi because i'm just about out of kimchi at the moment so being on holidays again i've got a little bit of time at the moment that i can actually um, do a bit of fermenting as well as uh, other preserving so i'm going to turn those into some yummy kimchi if you uh, haven't done kimchi before, I've got a video on how to make that. It's so easy and it's actually a really quick ferment. You know, after about four days, it tends to be ready. So those two simple things, and, and that was really cheap as well, um, is going to make me a really nice big batch of kimchi. Grapes, nice kilo of those there. Zucchinis, tomatoes, carrots. Oh, and this beautiful big lot of avocados, which I was quite happy with as well. Nice and firm, um, but yeah, um, not soft or anything like that. So they're perfect for eating right at the moment, really. Over here, capsicum and a nice big kilo of mushrooms as well. Oh, and also a big watermelon. <laughs> Very funny, big watermelon from the big watermelon. So as you can see, like I got a lot of stuff here today. And if I had gone to a normal supermarket, this would have cost an awful lot. As I said, the bananas, they were like 15 bucks for a box. The onions over here, they were only $10 for the bag. In fact, everything that you're looking at here, we bought, so I do have the receipt here. Oh, come on. We bought for, I think it was like about $80. Let's have a look. There we go. $83.94. Ah, hang on a second. No, that's not completely right because that was what I paid in the retail area because it is worth kind of noting when you go through the checkouts, there's two different zones that you go through. One spot is for wholesale orders. The other one is for your retail orders. So that amount there was for my retail order. So another 30 bucks on top of that. And that will be the total for everything that you're looking at here. And can you just imagine what you'd be paying for this just at your normal supermarket? Definitely a lot more than the sort of prices that we're looking at here. And that's why I love going down there because it means that I can get a lot of food. As you can see, it's really good quality stuff as well. And it's great for the fresh eating. Plus, I can get a whole bunch for the preserving as well. I will say it's always going to be my preference to grow our own food and preserve our own food. You know, I know exactly what's gone into this. I know I've not sprayed anything on these plums at all, which means I can eat them fresh when I'm roaming around the garden, as well as knowing exactly what's in them when I'm going to preserve them as well. But I can't grow everything, so it is super handy to have a decent supplier particularly to get those things that I just can't grow in this zone as well. Like we really can't grow tropicals like the bananas. I also get a lot of mangoes um, from there when they're cheap and on sale as well. And at the moment, you know, when it comes to the fresh eating, things like capsicums are nowhere near ready yet. Neither are my tomatoes. And well, I haven't had cucumbers yet either. And then there's always those things like the mushrooms, which I've had a go at growing a few times now, but I just don't get decent enough yields with the time that I have available. So 
handy to be able to just buy those in our busy lives as well. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed seeing everything that I picked up today and hearing a little bit about how I get my hands on the things that I preserve. And uh, yeah, thanks a bunch as always for joining guys and catch you later.